In this episode of Member Moments, join Cheryl and I while we share a breakfast of pancakes and syrup. These are sure some delicious pancakes, Ken. I know, and I think what really makes the difference is this delicious maple syrup made locally at Northwoods Maple. Have you ever really thought of where maple syrup comes from? Here's an idea. Let's go out to Northwoods Maple and visit the folks out there and ask them about maple syrup. So in the meantime, can you pass the syrup? So off I went on a road trip to the Northwoods Maple Farm east of Merrill to learn all about maple syrup production. How many trees do you actually have tapped? We have 3,000 on this property. 3,000. So why is it you collect sap in the spring in order to make it into syrup? The natural process as far as when sap begins to flow in the spring of the year, uh, what you're looking for are the, the freezing and thawing cycles. You know, it gets down to the 20s at night, even the teens, and then you're looking for that mid-30s to, to 40 degrees in the daytime, and that's really what gets the trees kick-started into that spring mode. So it's the movement of sap from the ground up into the trees and yep. back down in, in the evening. So when that afternoon. freeze and thaw cycle occurs, um, that basically tells the tree that, hey, spring's coming, we can start making leaves. And the tree uses sap as the nutrient to make those leaves. The Rankins use a vacuum tubing system for the collection of their sap. So the basic functions of a tubing system, um, you have your drop lines which are essentially attached to your tree and then from the drop lines um, it goes to what's called a lateral line and that goes from tree to tree and it ends up at a main line um, where all the sap is put to a central collection point and then it flows to one particular location in the woods. Their son, Hunter, who's a vital part of the family operation, uses a more traditional method of taps and buckets. How many trees are you responsible for with your buckets? 49 at this point in time, but I am going to tap one more. Uh, how much sap do you usually collect? Uh, It really depends on how good the days are. If it's freezing at night and it's warm during the day, like 34, 35 degrees, it's normally pretty good. Is it tasty? Yeah, it's nice and sweet. So the sap is collected and ready to be finished into syrup. Time to process it in the evaporator. Boxes and all of the, 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 the levers obviously need to be turning the right way. You can run this entire system and keep everything going and never have to touch any syrup or sap. We spent like a, a year to two years or so designing and, and kind of figuring out what we wanted in the system so that everything works in a way that all works together but works efficiently together. So we took pieces from what other people are doing, other producers are doing, but we also took some of our own pieces and thought, well, it needs to run in this direction or it needs to go that way or we need a button here or a lever there and then how we can figure out how to use those systems to work together to make everything much more efficient. The planning time was a good one to two years of just putting all of that together from all the way from the woods all the way through the cooking process. We want to share what we do because in some ways it's kind of a lost art. It's coming back, but in some ways it's something that not a lot of people get to experience, especially from the bigger cities. And so um, people can find us, give us a call, and we do private tours all the time. And it's a lot of fun. And especially like for the children in the area, some of them have access to actually tap trees, but some children in this area don't, whether their family doesn't do it or the school doesn't offer that as a option. They just don't have that chance. And to see it is so cool to learn that this stuff actually comes from a tree. I mean, who thinks the food we get is from a tree? And during the production season, you have tours coming in, people will wanna see what's going on? Yeah, so we always open at least one weekend every year. Um, we Both days, we'll cook the whole day. Um, we let people come in and, and see what we're doing. And so this year, the last weekend in March, we're open um, both Saturday and Sunday. And you can come in and you can see what we do. Um, watch the whole process from start to finish, ask your questions. But yeah, it's just a lot of fun, something great to experience. And it's just something not a lot of people, again, get to experience that actual cooking process. So it's a lot of fun. So we make everything here. We have a full kitchen here where we make all the products and then we take all these products and um, stock them at our store. Um, we also do sell them at farmers markets and flea markets and, and events and things like that um, around the state of Wisconsin. So um, it's a lot of fun for us to just bring those products around. And, and the whole time we're selling, whether it's at our store or anywhere else, we're trying to teach people again, how it's made and what we're, how, what we're making it from and, and what we're doing. We just want to be open about that as well. A website where people can purchase online and 
Um, pretty much any product will ship anywhere in the United States. Um, as soon as we start shipping outside of the United States, it's a little, little pricey, but, um, <laughs> but yeah, it's a lot of fun to just know that people are um, experiencing these products all over the whole United States. Well, that's it for this episode of Member Moments. And I want to thank the Rankin family and Northwoods Maple for letting me into their operation and getting to taste some of the sweetness that comes out of their trees right here in Merrill. Thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you next time.